I was angry because CNN told me to be angry. This is how Amir Odom, a young black man, described his experience as a BLM supporter. Now, thought leaders, this is by far one of the most controversial episodes I've ever recorded and also one of my most favorite conversations. It may trigger you. It may ruffle your feathers. It may challenge what you currently believe, all of which are great reasons why you need to listen to the episode in full. Join me and Amir Odom for a discussion that pushes the boundaries on the current narratives being shared in our world today. In this episode, you'll learn why the term privilege is greatly misused and needs to be stopped. The reasons why Amir believes that BLM is spreading a disempowering nar narrative for the Black community. Why distributing reparations is not the answer what it really takes to change the narrative for the Black community, and why individuals must take responsibility for the choices that they make. Now, a little bit about Amir. At the age of 25, Amir is destined to make an impact on this planet. After navigating a series of challenges in his life, he has adopted the mindset that you can either be a victim of your past or a victor of your future. And at some point, you have to move forward and accept that you are the present of the past. He believes that everyone has the capability to become the best version of themselves. With a passion for, for, with a passion for self development, new perspectives, and essentialism, he helps his clients create the lives they wish to live in. Now, as just as a reminder, before we dive into the episode, my new book, Potent Leadership, will be released this summer, 2021. If you're not on the book wait list yet, get your asses on the list. As, so, as a member of our book wait list, you will get first dibs on the book. And not only that, you will gain access to the bonuses and hint, hint. It will be uh, a little community that gives you some face time with me. So get on the list, rubyframon.com forward slash book waitlist, or you can text hashtag book launch to 1781-336-0160. If you consider yourself to be an awake and aware truth seeker and leader in these times, and you want to connect outside of social media and dive deeper into the truth beyond the narrative that mainstream media is showing us, head to rubyframon.com forward slash awake dash aware to start receiving my weekly emails that will be showing research and fact-based evidence uh, that goes against what the mainstream media wants you to know. You can also join me in Telegram at rubyfremon.com forward slash Telegram. All of these links and more will be in the show notes. And finally, whether you're a new thought, you're, whether, you're, you're, you, whether you are a brand new listener or a loyal thought leader, please take a moment right now to download a few episodes and drop a rating and review on iTunes. Please do this. This helps me get this podcast out to more leaders around the world. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you for doing so. And now it is time to dive into race and privilege with Amir Odom. Hey, thought leaders, welcome back to another episode of today's thought leader. And today I have a very special guest who goes by the name of Amir Odom. Amir and I first connected on Instagram, actually through his content, I became obsessed with this young black man sharing some fucking potent truth, stuff that I was not hearing any other person from the black community sharing that is stuff that makes you go, hmm which I find hard to come by nowadays. So I am excited to dive into this conversation because I know that Amir is going to get some thoughts and questions and curiosity rolling up for you, which um, is very much needed in today's linear, one single narrative type world. So with that, I welcome Amir to the show. Amir, welcome. Thank you for having me. I'm honored to be here and I'm glad uh, that we connected on, on this. 
Yeah. I love, I love, so I love and hate social media. I think you and I talked about this, oh, yeah. um, but I love that it can also just connect you with real cool people who you just mm -hmm. vibe with. And um, for me, you know, I'm one of those people that if your content doesn't inspire me or have me ask more questions or get curious, then I don't really want to follow you. Uh, and I don't even know how I found you. I think someone else shared something of yours, like one of your slide throughs. Mm -hmm. And I read that and I was like, holy shit. First of all, there was so much truth in it that I had never heard before. And second, I could see it was very obvious how much research and energy went into putting this, you know, six or seven slide swipe through together. Um, mm -hmm. And so, yeah, I mean, what's it like? Well, let's, I want to backtrack a little bit because I think it's important for people to know a little bit about your story. Right. Um, and maybe we can do like the, the snapshot of what you shared on PragerU. Mm -hmm. And then I will share the link to the PragerU interview, the feature that you did, which everyone listening, you have to have to watch that YouTube video. Thank you. Um, I guess a, a brief synopsis is that growing up, my dad left when I was about five years old. And, you know, growing up, I was like, oh, I'm going to come see you and we'll hang out. And he never did. Mm -hmm. So that instilled in me, you know, to practice discernment and really go after information myself and not really like rely on anyone mm -hmm. um and then just the battle of being black and gay and this this idea that I had to be literally black and gay like I had to be the stereotype of what a black man is mm -hmm. and then have to be what the stereotype of what a gay man is and I'm not mm -hmm. either of those mm -hmm. um and that made me a very very confused in my life especially with growing up and going through puberty and so I mean, long story short, that really inspired me to really go after information myself mm -hmm. and to stop being told how to think because it was evident that it wasn't working. I was being told, hey, you're gay. That means you have to do all the mannerisms, love the rainbow, stand for X, Y, Z. Mm -hmm. And I didn't, you know, like, oh, you're a black man. That means you have to like, you know, love the rap music. You have to do X, Y, Z, play sports, all that stuff. And I didn't. So I took that and really made it my own and made it my mission to always seek information for myself and not be allowed to be led by mainstream media or by culture and always go out there and do things myself. Mm. Yeah. And it's so interesting because mainstream media plays such an impact on yeah. our identity and how we see ourselves you know, let's just be real. Black people are depicted in a very specific way. In oh, media. for sure. You know, think of all the movies we watched growing up and all the TV shows. And, you know, there's that always that movie with the token black friend who mm -hmm. usually gets killed first. Um, like, oh, <laughs> I mean, what's honestly, up with that? <laughs> or even like a uh, love and hip hop. Right. It's really all, all that you see on the media in regards to black and gay, it's it's the fringes. It's what you, you really don't experience out in the day-to-day -day life. Mm -hmm. And yeah. I just got so tired of having that narrative shoved down my throat. Yeah. And it's confusing, right? I remember listening to your interview and you mentioned how confusing it was growing up with oh, yeah. these different identities that you felt like you had to fit into. Mm -hmm. It ultimately was like driving me toward the place where I wanted to commit suicide, really, because I was just tired of having to perform or be what everyone else wanted me to be. You know, I wasn't really, didn't really have a good relationship with my parents. And then I was fighting with being black, fighting with being gay. I was just done with it. And then really, I was just laying in bed after a failed attempt and was just like, you know what, now's my time to really make a pact with myself and be like, you know what, if you aren't going to take your life, if you're not going to go through it with it, mm -hmm. then it's time to actually create your life. Mm -hmm. And that's why like now I've fallen in love with the work that you do and the work that Dr. Doe Dispenza, mm -hmm. Dispenza does because little did I know that's what the work I was practicing, I was creating in my life. I was putting myself outside of my environment. Mm -hmm. You know, even though I was, you know, alone and in bed and 
poor and you know we're homeless in my head I'm like okay this is temporary yeah I'm gonna get out of this I don't know how right now but I am this is not my life so I'm gonna keep going and pushing and pushing and now I mean you and I both we've created our lives Mm -hmm. and continue to do so yeah and then what's what people listening need to understand too and you and I are both big on this right like Mm -hmm. we're not victims of our circumstances or our environments And just for some context, um, you know, I'm Indian Punjabi Sikh. A lot of people don't know, but uh, Britain took over India. Like they completely took over when, and this isn't that long ago in my grandmother's generation and ripped away our culture, ripped away everything from us. And we came back, you know, and something in our Indian culture is we always take pride in, in who we're being and what we're doing in the world. And in media, you see the typical, I mean, where where do you see the typical Indian characters? They're usually the corner store owners or the cab drivers, right? Mm -hmm. Um, But what you don't see is how many really successful Indians there are in the world. And for me, I was always taught, always, like you reap what you sow, Mm -hmm. right? So- we can be victims of our circumstances or of our environments of our past lineage history, or we can choose to take this life that we are living right now today in the present moment and make it our own. Boom. And I feel like I can say that as an Indian woman, mm-hmm. but I feel like it's our society has made it harder for you to say that as a black for man. sure. And it's why, I mean, you hit the nail on the head. That's exactly why I speak out as hard as I do in terms of Black Lives Matter, Mm -hmm. because I am living my ancestors' dream. They could not fathom doing the things that I'm doing. Mm -hmm. I'm, it it just, it baffles me that there are people out here that really think they have it worse than their grandparents, and they don't. And I think it's a disservice and a dishonest to my ancestors who were really out here on the fields getting beat, working so hard to where now I'm doing everything they can only dream of, yet people are complaining about that are acting like that's not an option. Mm -hmm. Like there's nothing that's separating me, a black man and a white man from doing or accomplishing greatness. Mm -hmm. Other different roadblocks we may face for sure. Mm -hmm. But at the end of the day, there's nothing legal stopping me from from becoming successful. And I, I see that in all aspects of my life and everyone else's life. And and that's just one of the reasons why I speak out so hard because I'm not, I'm not comfortable letting this slide. I'm not comfortable letting this behavior of other black people being misled and lied to by the mainstream media because I was there, Mm -hmm. you know, I was really down in the streets marching with BLM. I was hurt. I was crying. I used to have the harsh anxiety of seeing the policeman and thinking I'm going to die. When in reality, I'm I'm not, you know, not to diminish any life lost, mm-hmm. but just to highlight how rare it is for an unarmed Black American to be shot by the police. It happens just as much as people get struck by lightning yearly. Mm-hmm. So when Wait, I heard... Is that, is that something you just pulled out of your ass or is that something you actually researched? I want to clarify this for them. No, that's listening. legit. Like if okay. you research right now, go on Google and look up the amount of people who've died by lightning strikes. It's averages around 25 yearly. Mm-hmm. And then if you use um, any police database, like the Washington Post has one, and you filter that by race, black, and then unarmed, mm-hmm. it's about the same. Mm-hmm. It, but you know there's going to be those people who argue then, the argument becomes then, well some of these cases aren't reported. Right. And then in that case, I'm like, well, I don't want to tell you because it's operating off of what <laughs> I'm seeing from the data, from right. my personal life experience and from the actual receipts that, I, that I'm getting from these mm-hmm. organizations. And, you know, yeah, a life loss is bad. But if you ask, there's a video online that I saw and this guy was going around asking black people, you know, how many people do you think you got shot by the cops? Mm-hmm. And they're like, oh, like a thousand or 5,000. It's like, no like 15, 20, mm. like it's bad. But at the same time, they're making it seem as if me walking outside is me me risking my life 
Mm-hmm. And that's not the case. And the amount of anxiety that that put on my shoulders mm-hmm. and that I'm sure it's putting on a, a multitude of other Black people's shoulders is just not acceptable. Mm-hmm. Because when I heard that statistics of the, the whole lightning scenario, mm-hmm. I was pissed. <laughs> mm-hmm. I was pissed off. I'm like, oh, that's not real. Like, that's not a thing. Like, right. you're not going to diminish that. Like, I was actually angry until I researched it myself. And I was like, oh, wait, it actually doesn't happen as often as the media says it does. Right. And that right there, that's what really took it off for me to really speak out against Black Lives Matter. Because it was after I went to my first and last rally that really spawned all of this. Yeah. I mean, it's just like anything. When we are told to fear something and we're told to fear it over and over and over again in many different ways you become scared of that something. Mm -hmm. But we have to learn to, we we have to understand that we can reframe that at any point in time. And I think that it's fascinating. This is a fascinating example of that because it's something that is, uh, you know, quite taboo to talk about, especially nowadays. Oh yeah. But you are a living, breathing example of someone who was like diehard believing this, had anxiety uh, when it came to the police, were wa- walked in a BLM rally, believed all these things, mm-hmm. and then just through some research, you were able to reframe your thoughts and your mindset around all of this and become the then creator of your life. Precisely, it was uh, it doing the research myself allowed me one the 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 freedom mm-hmm. to actually like live a life that I knew was for me um and it, it it relieved so much anxiety and I just only hope that people out there are actually doing their own research mm-hmm. because the only reason after I when I look back personally I believe the one reason why I was so angry is because I had no idea what I was standing for mm. I felt like I was angry because I and when I'm looking back at the time of my life I had no grounding Right. You know, I was just angry because CNN was telling me to be angry. The only grounding I had was the tweets mm-hmm. and the news headlines, but I really had no facts to back up what I was saying. Mm-hmm. When I would get in uh, discussions with people who were more right leaning, um, I-, I would find myself getting stooped because I didn't have any sources or anything to back it up, back my claims up. Mm-hmm. I was just that angry. I was just <laughs> living off of anger and right. fear. Right. And now that's not the case anymore. And I know that that can be the case for so many others if they just take a second to actually do the research themselves mm-hmm. and look into these cases and look into, you know, well, really, one of my mentors once told me in the midst of fear, facts are your friends. Mm, so if you're so living good. in fear, if you're living in uncertainty, look at the facts, look at the facts at hand and let them be your friends. Right. If you have anxiety about the police, if you feel like America is just this, this pitiful racist country where black people are just getting hurt day in and day out, let the facts be your friends. Look up the facts and actually look at the facts. Mm-hmm. Dive deep into all of these cases. They're all online. It's right there. Mm-hmm. Yeah. And once you do that, it'll be really, uh, really freeing. Yeah. But it takes a willingness to do that, right? Like. Yeah. That's fair. It we does. See, we see that with everything going on in our world today. Like everyone's arguing science, facts, all the things, and mm-hmm. everyone's fighting for something. It seems like everyone's angry about something. But have you ever stopped to ask yourself, why am I angry? Have you ever stopped to even consider or look at facts or beliefs that are different than yours? And I think a lot of people don't have that willingness. What gave you the willingness to even dive into that research? a good question and that's a good point that you have to have you have to have that willingness to do the research yourself Mm -hmm. and I think for me I mean when I'm looking back it 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 kind of stems from my father like I I didn't like I didn't like being lied to growing up Mm -hmm. and so when I went down to my first BLM rally I, I had that feeling that I was being lied to you know I'm looking at the actual issue at hand. If you're saying Black lives matter, I'm expecting you to talk about all Black lives. Mm -hmm. So the second, and and 
it's it just wow that the second I bring up a black on black crime, mm-hmm. no, you're deflecting. No, get out of here with that. No, 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 no. And it's like, I'm sorry, I thought this was Black Lives Matter. Like we're calling out everything in the terms of black lives. Mm-hmm. But instead, this is turning into black people who have been killed by white men matter movement. Mm-hmm. And that's it. Because they don't want to focus on everything else. Mm-hmm. And as soon as I saw that, as soon as I was getting that backlash, it it it, it, it stuck with me. Mm-hmm. And it was like, you know, something isn't sitting right with this movement. The fact that I'm getting so much hate for bringing up literally black lives lost. Right. And that was really the kicker. And then several discussions with um, some of my Republican friends Mm -hmm. that I couldn't uh, just back up myself, back up my claims. And at this time you weren't, you weren't considering, you you didn't consider yourself to be conservative. At all, no, Yeah. no, no. Just Um, I consider myself, you know, for sure. I consider myself to be very left-leaning, but with an openness to just at least have a dialogue and have a conversation because I was also aware that in this life, you know, knowledge is power. And I, I'm not going to sit here and just surround myself in an echo chamber and have my ego stoked. Mm-hmm. I have to look elsewhere mm-hmm. for ideas and thoughts. So I was open for that. And as soon as I was open and I did just, you know, the little research that I did, mm-hmm. it just opened my worldview so much. Um, and of course, some other events hadn't went to play um, as far as, you know, being invited to the White House and then posting about that and mm-hmm. getting, you know, attacked on Twitter by 40,000 people. Right. Um, well, you want to tell them why? <laughs> <laughs> yes. Yeah, so I, a uh, big Beyonce fan, and I had just went to a Beyonce concert. I flew off her to a finale. I was on her homepage. And then after that, I flew to D.C., I went to um, a Black Leadership Summit while Trump was in office. Mm -hmm. And I met Trump for myself. At this time, I was still not a conservative, not a Republican, none of that. Mm -hmm. I just wanted to go to the source. Mm -hmm. I didn't like being lied to. People are telling me to hate Trump. I'm not looking at the media to tell me why I should hate Trump. I want to go to Trump myself. Mm -hmm. Why should I hate you? So I went there and I met him. And I'm like, okay, well, this is very interesting. And I posted that (laughs) on Twitter. Mm -hmm. I just posted two screenshots. I was like, what a crazy 20 days this has been from Beyonce's homepage to Donald Trump's Twitter. What is my life? Mm -hmm. And then the floodgates opened and they're like, what are you doing? You know, you faggot, you nigger, yada, yada, yada. And I'm like, this is supposed to be the party of like inclusivity and Mm -hmm. equality and acceptance. Like all I said was that I went But it's like, even that I'm there, you're willing to cancel me. I have family members, all of it. Mm -hmm. Um, And that really took off all the stress of, well, what if I speak out? Like, someone's going to hate me. No, that that already happened. Mm -hmm. (laughs) So I had nothing to lose at this point by even going harder. So I did. Right. Yeah, and it's so interesting because as someone who also my entire life was super Mm -hmm. left-leaning to completely shifting my paradigm in 2020, um, I remember just sharing a, a couple things in my stories. I was never like red hat mm-hmm. pro Trump, but I would share things that were more red leaning. Right. And the DMS I would get would be like, you are racist. You are homophobic. Mm-hmm. You are, uh, all this shit. And I was, uh, it, the associations people make, Yeah, it's intense and things have gotten super intense over the last year and a half mm-hmm. and people like me and you continue to get louder, but it's, it's a lot, you know, like I was just it's looking a lot through, to the com- I was just looking through the comments on your latest video that you like oh, just yeah. posted this week. And I'm going to link that one too, cause it's really good. Um, Thank you. there was like. I think you're at like 390 comments on that already. And like, you just posted it. And for the most part, people are supportive because I think you've cleared out all the haters. Yeah. However, <laughs> every now and then, oh yeah, there's this like super hate filled, a uh, very ungrounded. And I don't know if you're noticing this, but a lot of the hate messages that we get, are, it feels like the people aren't super grounded. Like 
they're angry mm-hmm. for the sake of being angry because you're not yeah. believing the same things that they're believing. Something like that. Like that's what it feels like. That's precisely it. And how do you, I mean, again, you're this young black man, a gay black man who is publicly leaning towards the conservative side, who mm-hmm. is publicly speaking out against BLM. This, these are some harsh territories to be doing this in and you're doing this yeah what keeps you going and how do you keep going despite all the shit that people throw your way because we only see the comments i don't even see your dms i i don't even know if i want to see your dms (laughs) (laughs) they are relentless um i think one of the most it's not notable um it's just the one that comes to mind i was like okay yeah it, it fueled me even more. When I see some of this hate, I'm like, oh, you're that mad? Okay. I'm still going to keep going. But there was one comment that they said, um, you know, I hope your loved one finds you dead at the door with bullet wounds in your back with blood dripping down your hand as your keys in the front door. Something wild, like the in response to the Prigger You video. Oh my Crazy. God. But despite all of that, <laughs> what keeps me going mm-hmm. is that I'm not... It, it, it's just the truth. Mm-hmm. The truth keeps me going. I'm not doing this for a motive. I'm not doing this for money. I'm not doing this for any other reason but to spread the truth. It's why I think, you know, my account grew from 2,000 followers to almost 140K followers mm-hmm. within a span of three months mm-hmm. because all of my stuff is sourced. Mm-hmm. Like I'm not, and I'm calm, I'm rational, I'm not trying to really stir the pot. Mm-hmm. I'm just giving you what I'm finding online with the sources. And if you get mad at that, I know that you're not grounded. I know that you're coming, like you said, you're ungrounded. You're coming from a place of fear and anger. And I used to be there. I have sympathy mm-hmm. for you, but I'm always going to keep going because it's just the truth and the truth will always prevail. Mm-hmm. When my left-leaning friends, they always ask me like, Amir, you're black and you're gay things would be so much easier for you if you just went along with everything. Cause I speak out against uh, gay culture too. Mm-hmm. And um, I was like, no, like sure. It would probably be quote unquote easier, but it's easier on my soul mm-hmm. when I'm following the truth. It's easier on me when I lay my head down at midnight mm-hmm. and I'm going to sleep. I'm going to sleep with a smile on my face, knowing that what I'm doing online is the right thing. Mm-hmm. Cause I have no ulterior motives other than just spreading the truth. And that's what will always keep me going despite any of the hate that comes my way, any negative comments, any backlash. Uh, it, it's not going to take me down mm-hmm. because yeah. I'm well aware of what my ancestors couldn't do. Mm-hmm. I'm aware that I am their dream. I'm aware that they couldn't use their, they couldn't, huh, they couldn't even fathom of using their voice like how I am now. Yeah. So I'm going to do that. Mm-hmm. I feel like it's a disservice if I don't. You know, um, everyone's supportive of me. Uh, There's no blockers, really, when it comes to finance and stuff. Like, there's nothing really holding me back from saying the things that I say. And I'm in a position where I'm able to, so I'm going to do that. Because I have seen cases where people have been vocal and, you know, they've lost their job or they just couldn't handle it. But ever since I was a kid, I'm able to take take the punches. Remember when I was a freshman in high school, I was sitting, um, leaning against uh, one of the pillars, mm-hmm. and this guy threw a milk carton at me. Which, side note, I'm lactose intolerant, so it's kind of <laughs> ironic. <laughs> but he threw a milk carton at me, and he was like, "You stupid faggot!" Mm. And I just picked up the milk carton, threw it away, wiped myself off, and just kept talking to my friend like nothing happened. Mm-hmm. And everyone was so confused, like, why well, you're not going to fight him? You're not going to, like, we're not angry. Mm-hmm. And I'm like, oh, he has bigger demons to battle. Like, he's yeah. going through some stuff at home. So I'm going to let him have this. That's fine. I'm bigger than that. Yeah. And then that's, that's always just how I rolled. I'm not yeah. worried about anyone else. Yeah, and I think that's a, that milk carton example is a, is a good analogy to use just in the online space, right? Because... There's always going to be people who have something to say. And I find always. that there's also people who speak up, but they, they, they're they, like, I'm going to show up in a polarizing way just for the sake of being polarizing. And, Precisely. And those people are not grounded either. They're just showing out. They're just pulling information out of their ass with nothing to back it up. T. And, 
<laughs> and I just sit back with my popcorn and keep watching them go in the comments yes. at people and it's crazy. But again, what I love about the content that you share is that it's well researched, it's backed up. And I think when when you come from a place where you're sharing information that you have researched, that you have put mm -hmm. energy into, it's like nothing anyone says in the comments can hurt you because right. you are so confident in what you shared. I mean, I remember you telling me how long it, it can take you to create one of these slide throughs, but why don't you share with our audience? Like how long does it take you on average to create one of your slide throughs for Instagram? On average, if it's a, I try not to do the, the current events, not too much current mm -hmm. events. Um, I can crank out in a few hours, but if I'm doing like, like one of my big graphics with like the, I think there was one, um, yeah, really my graphics will take about a week, two, mm -hmm. two weeks to do. Mm -hmm. um, the amount of research takes the most because I want to make sure, like you said, that I'm saying everything correct. Mm -hmm. um, and I work with an editor and we go through it on phone calls. It's about, he puts in a few hours on each graphic, just making sure that everything's correct. Nothing's a lie. Mm -hmm. It looks good. It can be shareable and it's time consuming, mm -hmm. but it, it, it's, it does good work. Um, and, and like you said, your point that the comments can affect me because I am putting in the work. Mm -hmm. It's a lot of hard work and I'm, I'm trying to, and I have separated myself from influencers on both the left and the right who just blast out news headlines. Right. Like I don't do that if that's why I rarely post <laughs> because it's taking time. I want to make sure that it is correct mm -hmm. and it is fine. And I will always be doing that. Yeah. That, and what you said about blasting out news lines, like that's what a lot of people just rely on, right? Mm -hmm. they, they just share news header after news header after news header. Like we can see this on mainstream media. What do you have to say about it? Like, what do you actually have to say? What, what do you, what, where's the information? Because all we're seeing is headlines and that's not right. helpful. If anything, that just continues to feed the fire. Mm -hmm. And I remember for me in 20 summer of 2020, um, you know, I was rah, rah BLM until I started noticing how people were being treated online and how people started to show up online. Mm -hmm. The Instagram started to feel like a very, very angry place. And as someone who, you know, I work in transformational coaching, I support my clients in really healing and facing their traumas. And here I was seeing a lot of unresolved trauma being projected towards others um, the so-called enemy, that being the white person, man or woman. Mm -hmm. And as a woman of color, I was like, something doesn't, this doesn't feel right. Um, and I think Rick, it was Rick Rubin who said, uh, the new racist is the anti-racist. Oh, wow. But look, I'm going to get like so many DMs for saying that out loud. I mean, but it's true. <laughs> but that's what I was feeling. But dare I go to my IG and say that because I would have been fucking massacred Roasted. online, right? <laughs> Roasted. Like, how dare you say this in your privilege? And that's what I want to talk about the word privilege, because mm -hmm. I can't tell you how I was called privileged so many times last year. And it's like, do you, do y'all even understand where I'm from my family history? Boom. Like, come on. But the word I was called privileged for being fit at one point because I shared a oh, baby. Yo I have on. to send this to you after this recording. Please. I shared a baby Yoda meme because I love baby Yoda. And in the meme, he says uh, it was something like um, eating all my snacks, getting fatty, fat, fat. Like it was a joke <laughs> about quarantine basically like being right. quarantining. And I thought it was funny because it was my life at that time, at the beginning mm -hmm. of quarantine, quarantine I was 15. Eating chips on the couch, like couldn't work out with my trainer. I was like, this is funny. Ha ha. So me, like, I think that's what I said. This is so me. And I got fucking burned alive and accused of being prep. Like people throw that word around so much. And I'd love to hear your take on 
the word privilege and how it's being used nowadays? The way that it's being used, it, it's, it's, I feel like it's being used as a cop out. Mm. Oh, you have privilege. So that's why you're speaking like this. Or, oh, why you have privilege is why you, um, you feel the way you feel. And then they try to move on to the next. Mm -hmm. When in reality, they don't look into our lives or what we go through. Um, you know, now I'm very active on Instagram and my stories. And I do have a video when I'm going off about being black in America and how, you know, the Klansman's not a threat. And in that video, I'm driving a Tesla and it's driving itself. And I like preface that in the video because my hands are flying everywhere. Right. And I pull off to go charge it and I'm like still ranting. And you look in the comments and they're like, oh, you're just this privileged little black boy. You know, you have a Tesla, yada, yada, yada. Like you haven't gone through anything in your life. You don't know what a struggle is, pain is. And I'm like, I literally was homeless um, 10 years ago. Mm -hmm. So I don't know what you're talking about. So I feel like the term privilege is very much used as just a scapegoat to move on to the next. And I'm tired of it, honestly, the whole mm -hmm. privilege argument. Oh, you're a privileged white man. You're a privileged black person. Mm -hmm. I'm sorry that I've just taken control of my life. Mm -hmm. That's a, pri I mean, hey, we're talking about privilege. I'm glad I live in America and I can do that. Yeah. And I can just switch my life around that someone in this country with the real privilege about being in America is that, you know, you can have a poor person turn around and be a billionaire. You can have a billionaire lose it all. Mm -hmm. And so I'm so tired of the privilege argument because at the end of the day, if we all just focused on ourselves and looked in the mirror mm -hmm. and said, how can I improve my life today? How can I be better than yesterday? What can I do to make sure I'm excelling in my job? What can I do to make sure that my passion's coming through, that I'm actually loving what I do? Mm -hmm. Do that. Instead of focusing on someone else and calling them privileged or being jealous about them, focus on you. Because mm -hmm. nine times out of 10, you're going to be there, if not excel them, if you just focus on you and mm -hmm. stay in your lane and have on that tunnel vision. Who cares what car someone else has? Who cares what, someone, what job has? How many followers this person has? What can you do in this moment to make a change in your life? What can you do in this moment to really grasp hold of your goals and dreams and ambitions and go after that? Mm -hmm. But this whole argument about privilege mm -hmm. has to be thrown away yeah. because at the end of the day, I don't care if I'm in, you know, okay, a good example. I don't care if I'm a sophomore and I'm sitting here, I don't have a car, I have to save up and buy one. But Billy's parents, they're wealthy, just bought mm -hmm. him a brand new car when he's 16. Mm -hmm. That has nothing to do with me. Yeah. I don't know what Billy's going through at home. Yeah, his dad may make money, but his dad's probably never at home because he's too busy making money. So Billy's probably alone. Like everyone has their own battles. So if you mm -hmm. just focus on you and not about the privileges of everyone else, mm -hmm. focus on the privileges in your life. Mm-hmm. So well said, so well said. And you'll probably still get burned at the stake for saying that on this podcast. <laughs> for sure. <laughs> <laughs> they so hate it. Be like, he right? can say that because he's privileged. Um, and, and she's privileged because she has a podcast. It's like, dude, I worked for this. We You're worked. privileged because you have money. I worked for it. Worked. And like, so what if my parents bought me my first car? My mom grew up in Calcutta, got married at the age of 16 because her mom their, her dad passed away and her mom had to marry off two kids immediately because she couldn't take care of all of them. Like my dad was born in India or raised in the UK. Uh, they worked their asses off to give their kids the life that they did not have. Mm -hmm. I don't call this privilege, right? I don't, and, I, and it's, it, it just baffles me when people use that word or even I, what I've been called recently is my health is a privilege. My health is a privilege. Do you know, I, the, all, most of my money goes oh. towards my well being and my health. Like I prior, I am devoted to my well being. And that is a choice that I make. You know, that's, that's the key thing. It's a choice that you've made. People are like, oh, you're privileged about it. No, I'm making smart choices. I'm sorry <laughs> that, you know, I got a comment because I take a lot of supplements and vitamins and all that uh -huh. stuff. And I spend about like 150 a month. Mm -hmm. on my well-being and mm -hmm. people are like oh my gosh that's a privilege 
Um, sorry, sweetie. I just saw your Instagram story, and I think the two past times you went out with liquor and your outfit combined was one hundred and fifty dollars. Mm-hmm. That could have been your health. That could have been a privilege to your health, but exactly. you did it. So I don't want to hear no, no. <laughs> That's crazy. You have health privilege. <laughs> the world. I mean, the world has gone insane, um, so literally, and. Okay, so we covered privilege, which is important. And I think that that, that, that term just needs to be abolished and, and stripped from our dictionaries and online space. And I love that you said it's it's a cop, a cop out, right? And yeah. it's a way for, for you to <clears throat> push away your own personal responsibility for your life to make better choices, to make mm-hmm. smart choices. Um, and to take control of your life. And what we're talking about, essentially, our entire conversation is is on uh, disempowering beliefs versus empowering beliefs, right? And right. with BLM, it can be very disempowering to believe all these stories. At some point, like my question, the question I always want to ask, but I feel like I can't because again, I'll be attacked. Mm-hmm. It's like, at what point in the history of, say your black family will the idea of you not being safe in america be dismissed like when right. when will when does that go into play because for me i can live out my history with my family and lineage and remain in that story and mm-hmm. let that story impact how I show up right now and today and the choices that I make. Or I can, like you say, live the life that my ancestors really wanted. Right. You're exactly right in that. And for me, I feel like a lot of Black Americans are at that point. And they're just blinded by it. And I think that's why the media is going so hard at twisting the narratives. Mm-hmm. And especially regarding the most recent shooting where the cop... Uh, mistook her, uh, used her gun instead of a taser. Mm-hmm. That could have easily been a headline that read, cop confused, gun with taser, killed young man, they're being charged. Mm-hmm. Someone could read that and be like, oh, good. Like, they're being charged, they did a bad thing. Mm-hmm. Instead, it's white lady shoots down black young man. Mm-hmm. And, I, and I just wish that more black people really grasped the hold that, you know, in this day and age in America, nothing's holding you back Mm -hmm. literally nothing like in my grandparents lifetime there was a time where they had to use different uh water fountains Mm -hmm. that's not the case anymore like you can't point to me anything that i cannot do be based off the color of my skin Mm -hmm. and and i think what you're saying as far as when does it end it ends now Mm -hmm. And it should have ended, but people are still holding on to it as if we're living in that past. We're living in that era and we're not. Right. Like I'm the present of the past. What happened in the past happened back then. What I'm gonna do personally is focus on what my ancestors were dreaming of. And can I do that? Yeah. Am I mm-hmm. gonna do that? Yeah. That's all I'm worried about. Mm-hmm. Like I'm not gonna be focused on the fact that they got beat. Like, yeah, that's sad, but I'm pretty sure we're at a place now where one, I'm not getting beat. Mm -hmm. Two, I've never seen a Klansman. Three, there's no law preventing me doing whatever I want to do in this country. So with all that being said, I'm going to do me. Mm -hmm. And I'm going to continue to prosper and create the life that I wish to live in Mm -hmm. because they did not have that opportunity. Mm. And I just wish more people sat back and realized that and really took in the blessings that they have in their life and the capability that they have. Mm -hmm. But you can't operate life from a place of fear. Mm -hmm. You can't operate life from a place of not having, uh, not being grounded. Mm -hmm. And so when you mix in COVID, when you mix in the race relations, you have a nation full of ungrounded people, angry people Mm -hmm. who are just operating off of this fear and anxiety. Mm -hmm. And I feel bad for them because it's like on one end, I'm like, hey, wake up. But another, it's like, damn, it's probably really hard for you to wake up right now because you are this angry. Mm -hmm. Because I was there, that pain's real. I was in the streets crying. I genuinely thought I was going to die at any time. So that's why I try to make these infographics and source them and really 
craft them so that they're easily to be di digested by the people who are in the streets, the people who are on the more leaning left to really see that, yeah, we have some issues to fix in America, but damn, we got it good right now. Mm -hmm. And that's what I really want for people to see. Yeah, uh, really, really well said. Um, and one, one other thing I want to touch on is like this idea of reparations. Oh, dear. <sighs> <laughs> because I have my own thoughts on this. Mm -hmm. I'd, I'd love for you to share your thoughts on, on that, the demand for reparations. Personally, I think it's too far gone. Mm -hmm. I think if they um, wanted to give out reparations, they should have, if anything, done it in the time that, you know, those people would have benefited from it. But why should I get a check for what happened to my great, the, the, my ancestors who are dead right now? Mm -hmm. I think the time has passed. Like there, it's, it's too messy. Who gets a check? Who doesn't get a check? Mm -hmm. Do people who are mixed get a check? Mm -hmm. Do people who, is it just if you have brown skin? Like, how do you trace back the ancestors? Like, it's too messy mm -hmm. and it's too far gone. Like, you want reparations for what? One of my friends, um, you know, left leaning and drives a convertible Mercedes. I think she has a Maserati now and wants reparations, wants her reparations check. And I'm like, why? Like you're literally doing what our ancestors could only dream of. Yet you're wanting a check for the beatings that they got. Mm -hmm. And they'll get, no, I want the check because of white privilege and white people been so far ahead in this country. It's like, I'm sorry, there, there's black billionaires that exist. We've had a black mm -hmm. president. There's no laws holding you back. You can be that. Mm -hmm. Put in the work because truth be told, there was no country. I'm not gonna say there wasn't any countries, but slavery's existed for centuries everywhere in everywhere mm -hmm. it's not just the white on black like slavery has been a thing for forever now so i'm trying to focus on what we have now where i can go and what i can benefit from mm -hmm. so like, i don't why not, why not celebrate like why not celebrate how far the black community has come why not right. celebrate the progress that has been made Right. And you because want real even, reparations to yeah. pour back into your own community. Yes. Like focus on that. You have all these rappers who just leave the hood and that's it. And then if they do, sometimes when they do go back to the hood, they're selling the drugs and being the, 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 the drug dealer of that hood that they left. Mm -hmm. And it's like, if you're this passionate about reparations, if you're this passionate about generational wealth, build it. Mm -hmm. Make that neighborhood, buy that building that you used to live in actually be the change you wish to see but you can't just sit here and complain mm -hmm. like the culture has to change itself mm. you want better schools build the private schools mm -hmm. you want the communities build up the communities get the gang violence out of it mm -hmm. but we have to be the change we wish to see how are we screaming for reparations but we're killing each other in record numbers Mm. How are we screaming? How is black people screaming for rep? Ooh, I'm about to get in trouble. How is black people screaming for reparations, making up 13% of the population of the United States of America, but committing over 50% of all murders and robberies? Mm. But you want reparations. Mm -hmm. I'm going to need you to look in a mirror and make reparations on your own life and be the change that you wish to see. Mm. Quit being mad at everybody else. Quit bringing a holiday. Like, actually take a step back. And look at what can I do now in my life instead of trying to get a check? Mm -hmm. What change can I make? What what am I afforded right now to be the difference in my community? Mm -hmm. Focus on that. But this whole reparations idea of reparations and black people getting a check, I'm so over it. I don't want it. And I think the conversation should just be done. Let, just let it go. We are dragging it on. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Wow. Um we'll definitely be getting some DMs about this episode. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. I um, mean, <clears throat> I'm all here for it. I'm here to have a conversation. Yeah. Um, we are reaching the end of this episode. I feel like we could talk forever, but is there anything, what, like, what is a final thought that you really want our listeners to leave with? There's one for sure. And maybe two. One is okay. if you're still here listening to this, and you are angry or you are left-leaning or you are sitting here like, what did I just listen to? 
or you are kind of angry, you're kind of like not sure the things that I was talking about, Google. Mm -hmm. I promise I'm not talking out of my ass. Just Google mm -hmm. and let the facts lead you. Mm -hmm. Do the research yourself. Do not allow your, your mind and emotions to be led by a news headline and a 20 second video clip. You know you're better than that. We all are. Your time is valuable. Your emotions are valuable. So I, I advise you to be grounded in your beliefs, understand your beliefs and practice your beliefs. Mm -hmm. don't, don't let Twitter rule your life. Don't let your friends rule your life. Don't let CNN rule your life. You rule that. You rule it yourself. Mm -hmm. that's, that's what I have to say to that. Mm. That was so good. Is there another one? You said there might be two. The other one is if, if you're already doing that, keep it up. <laughs> if you're already doing that, um, I'm grateful that you're here listening and I'm grateful that you understand that you can and you can and will be the change you wish to see in the world. Mm -hmm. You have to act on that and do that and operate from a place of love mm -hmm. and spread that, you know? We're not trying to be hateful. We're not trying to be divisive. We, we, at the end of the day, five plus four equals nine. Mm -hmm. And six plus three equals nine, two mm -hmm. different ways, but the same result. Mm -hmm. So a lot of us on this planet got different ways of achieving wealth and community and love and happiness. So let's focus on how can we all get there collectively yeah. instead of hating each other for my viewpoints or your viewpoints that this is different. That's different. No, let's just all just, you know, have be more open to conversations. And if you're still here, I'm thankful that you're doing that. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Let's stop furthering the divide, you know, let, let, exactly. let's seek to understand each other instead of bashing each other because you just don't have the energy or willingness to think differently. Like just right. enough with that. Um, Amir, thank you so much for just sharing your presence, your wisdom. Thank you for being the leader that you are in the online space, for using your voice so unapologetically. I um, appreciate you. For being so thoughtful in terms of how much time and energy and research you put into every single thing that you share. Um, it's rare to see nowadays and it's mm -hmm. so, so needed. Um, why don't you tell everyone where they can find more of you online and I'll be sure to share the links in the show notes as well. For sure. Um, all social media is at Amir X Odom, A-M-I-R-X, the letter X, O-D-O-M. And I'm really active on Instagram and I'm going to start streaming soon on YouTube and Twitch to just talk about everything. And yeah, that's where you can find me. And I'm thankful for being here. This has been a great conversation. It's such an honor that you reached out to me and that you find quality in my work. It's, uh, it's what I strive for. You know, it, it's mm -hmm. nice to know that the time and effort is really paying off. And this podcast mm -hmm. is a testament to that. So it's an honor mm -hmm. and thank you. Mm -hmm. Thank you so much. Um, and to our listeners, uh, thank you for joining me and Amir on this episode of Today's Thought Leader. If you found value in this episode, if it challenged you in some way, shape, or form, hell, if it even triggered you, share it with a friend, share it on your social media, get this conversation out there. Let's start to encourage each other to think differently, to think openly, to have the willingness to research things that go beyond what we currently believe. Um, and while you're at it, download a few episodes and drop a rating and, re and review on iTunes. Make sure you follow us on social media. Let us know that you listened to it. Um, if you have anything that you want to share insights, please feel free to do so. My handle is at I am Ruby. All the links will be in the show notes and then check back on Monday for a brand new episode of today's thought leader. Thank you leaders.